1991 Eagle Talon with a 2.0 liter engine. This is a non-turbo model. And basically this is a Mitsubishi Eclipse uh, with an Eagle Talon name. Symptoms on this car are check engine light comes on randomly, uh, mainly at idle. When he opens the throttle, it goes out. When he comes back to idle, it comes on. It's not all the time. Uh, he's also complaining about some hesitation problems on acceleration. And so the first thing we want to do on this car is show you how to get trouble codes out of one of these old designs where you cannot connect the scan tool to it. Okay, here's the data link connector. This is on the left kick panel area, uh, just to give you a little perspective of where I am. And it's right next to the fuse box. Um, I may have misspoke in the last segment. Uh, Mitchell does give you, or Chrysler for that matter, does give you a way to communicate with this thing um, with a DRB, which is a Chrysler scan tool. Um, and you know what, I, truthfully, I didn't even check to see if we could do it with a, one of our Snap-on scan tools. I just want to show the manual method here. Um, I think it's valuable for uh, you guys to know how to do it. Uh, the procedure is to use an analog voltmeter and count the needle sweeps, but in our case, we're gonna use a scope and we can actually um, uh, look at the square waves and tell what, what trouble code we have. So the procedure is to uh, connect to pin one and pin 12 uh, on this connector. And so pin one is actually, get my perspective here. Pin one is this top left pin up here and pin 12 is the bottom right pin. And so what we wanna do is we're gonna take our meter connector and I'm gonna to adapt to pin one and I'm gonna to adapt to pin 12. This is a little bit hard with these thicker test leads. Kinda of hard to do both of these at once. And uh, that's it, that's the connections, and I'm gonna take you up to the meter and we'll see what, what trouble codes we have. Okay, just real quick on our information, and this is from Mitchell, this is why you need to have good, a good database when you do troubleshooting. So it shows you a picture where the data link connector is located where we were, shows you a picture of the data link connector, pins one and 12 is where we connect our leads. Uh, that was in the procedure, I'm not gonna show you that part at least not show you the step by step. This part is showing you the uh, uh, basically description of what we're doing. The larger square wave is going to be tens and the smaller square waves are ones. So this is an example of a code 14 on this paper. And then the nice piece you get too is you get a whole list of potential fault codes. So for example, code 11, this is what it would look like code 12 would look like this and so on. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, if there's multiple codes, the way the system's designed is it will start with the lowest code and then report to uh, the next one in numerical order. And if the code just simply repeats itself over and over, then there's only one code in memory. So I'll take you to the scope now. Okay, as far as my settings go, uh, we're on a 20 volt scale and we picked a 20 second time base and you can see it's kind of a coincidence that our example in in Mitchell for what code 14 was is exactly the trouble code we have on this car so you see the the longer square wave is tens and the shorter ones are ones this is code 14 then we see code 14 again and uh, generally what I like to do when doing flash code diagnosis is make sure that it repeats itself I look for it to do it three times and then on the fourth time, if it's the same code, I can be pretty confident that there are no other codes in memory. Some manufacturers will, will actually report the codes three times each before it'll go to the next code. So once I see four, I'm pretty much done. So what we're looking at, definitely confident that uh, we have a trouble code 14. Uh, if we look up what a code 14 is on our chart, Code 14 is our throttle position sensor circuit. And so we're gonna go under the hood now, take a look at the throttle position sensor. All right, so under the hood, looking at the TPS, certainly helps to know a little bit of description and operation. 
Uh, this one is a potentiometer type. Uh, it is a three wire TPS. It's got a four pin connector, but only three wires. And on a potentiometer, we're looking at a five volt reference, a signal and a ground. Uh, we've already done our homework and the middle pin uh, is the signal wire. So we have that T pin and our yellow lead is connected to our signal wire. And our black lead is connected to a known good ground. In this case, we're using battery ground. So I'll take you to the scope and we'll take a look at our TPS voltage signal. We'll do some sweep tests, see what we got. All right, using the Snap-on Vantage for this one, I'll keep you guys focused on the scope. All I'm gonna do, got the key on, engine's off obviously, and I'm going to open and close the throttle and see what we got as far as a TPS sweep goes. That looks pretty good, although we're on a 20 volt scale. I'm gonna change that scale. We're gonna come over to a, to a 10 volt. I mean, we could even use five. The only issue with a five is maybe we have to pull this zero line down so we just see the top of the waveform, but we'll go with that. My time base, 20 second time base. I mean, that's okay. That might be a little bit uh, too long of a time base. Maybe go drop that down to 10. That's just personal preference though, truthfully. And uh, doing the sweep. And we buried our scale there. So yes, I am going to have to change this to a 10 volt. And what we can do with the 10 is we can move our zero line up a little bit, get that more centered on the screen. And that actually initially looks like a pretty good sweep test. Nice and smooth going from 0.56 to 4.99 volts. So it looks pretty good. Do a couple uh, snap throttle ones, which is gonna kind of jar it a little bit. And actually, with that little snap throttle, I don't like this little delay here. Now we're down to 0 0.31 of a volt. Don't like that at all. Now we're back to 0.57. This should never drop below the this 0.5 number on this. And there's a problem right there. And the key with that was certainly vibration. If you look at this, this waveform on the screen, what you're looking at, right now we're at 0.02 of a volt. So clearly our voltage is lower than normal. Our normal voltage on this car was 0.56. And that snap throttle test, uh, what happened is this wiper in this potentiometer is actually not making contact right now. And so that kind of matches his symptoms of at idle uh, the lights coming on and off uh, and sometimes we're getting hesitation problems and then there was a third symptom I was just made aware of which is at times the idle surges on him and this all matches a TPS problem so what we're looking at this would be a glitch and um, I actually have this in my book that heat and vibration is the keys to recreating any intermittent certainly we have an intermittent TPS fault here um, and uh, vibration was key to catch it. Let's see if I can do it a couple more times. I'm gonna unfreeze that. And we're still at point two. I'm gonna open the throttle slowly, see if we, we start making contact again. And, and wow, it didn't make contact until I actually opened this throttle You look at this one this was me not really uh, moving the throttle very smoothly but this bottom part when I opened the throttle I was probably half throttle before that signal came back and what that would do on the road you're opening the throttle half throttle there's nothing there then all of a sudden the TPS signal comes back you're gonna get all of a sudden get this big surge uh, in power uh, which was one of the complaints so that is a sticking uh, wiper in this potentiometer. Truthfully, there's really no need to check the reference and ground when you see something like that. We can certainly do that just to be 100% and comfortable. Um, but that is a uh, glitching TPS for sure. Very nice one to catch. 
Um, I, and I guess we'll do that real quick since we're talking about it. Let me unfreeze this picture. And we'll just do a quick reference and ground test. All I'm gonna do is shift this wire, same wire that we're using, and I've shown other videos for this. Uh, that is my ground wire. It's fixed at 0, .00. And we can do some snap throttle tests. Pay attention to the ground. We don't wanna see any sudden changes in the ground. That looks good. Same thing on the reference wire, which is the bottom wire, and this one should be a steady five. And we want to do the same kind of tests. Some snap throttle. We don't want to see any drops or anything in that reference wire. And that looks pretty good. So I'm not concerned about the connector. I'm not concerned about the uh, five volt reference in the ground. But what I am concerned about is this TPS and that condition right there where I just made it drop down to zero volts. And I'm opening the throttle, opening the throttle, still opening, still opening. And it actually, it actually responded with that one, which is kind of interesting. But this is definitely, definitely a sticking. Uh, I don't know if we could call it sticking or just a poor contact down around the idle position of this potentiometer. And where they wear the most, we talked about this in theory actually today, where throttle position sensors wear the most is right at the idle position. And so this is a typical worn out resistor where it makes contact, where that wiper makes contact with the resistor. That is a faulty TPS. So good review on doing manual codes. You don't necessarily need a scan tool to do troubleshooting. Um, on some of these older cars, you can do flash code diagnosis and you f if you have access to good information uh, where you can look up the code and the definition, and you know how to do uh, basic potentiometer type testing, that's all you needed. So very, very good review.